Oh, yeah. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. Friday night, we had a little bit of a joke session talking about Justin Trudeau here on the live streams, which, by the way, if you haven't joined us for live streams here on Friday Night Fringe, I would highly encourage you guys to come out and check those out starting at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central here on the channel where myself and my beautiful wife, Mrs. Fringe, sit down and we talk about everything about politics. But we joked around a little bit about the comments being passed around in the House of Commons this week in regards to Justin Trudeau's, uh, we'll say, grooming policies. <laughs> and no, we're not talking about children. We're talking about... Um, what exactly is going on with him in bathtubs? Uh, if you missed what happened in the House of Commons earlier this week, uh, of course, Garnet Jenis, the MP for Sherwood Park, Alberta, had stood up and, uh, well, he, he was actually sitting when he made the remark. I shouldn't say he stood up. He interjected during a question period to essentially ask if Trudeau holds his meetings in the bathtub of his $9 million luxury condo in New York. Now, Justin Trudeau, of course, was in New York last week to appear on Stephen Colbert uh, and speak at a very empty room of the United Nations Summit, which we covered on this channel. Uh, but essentially what's going on now is the old term, give an inch, take a mile. The liberals, of course, in full meltdown, finding any straws to grasp at with their low polling numbers by essentially making a three ring circus out of the comment by making it a complete out of context, wacko uh, witch hunt. Now, Garner Genesis, of course, was referring uh, once again to uh, Trudeau's New York consulate. I want to get into that first, just to give some context on what's happening here. Now, I do have a clip of Garner Genesis actually stating what he meant by that comment. I know I've been told that there's rumblings going on that Andrew Shear had some uh, opinions about that. Now, I've actually reached out to Andrew Shear's office. I'm hoping I can get Andrew Shear on the channel uh, in the near future to maybe discuss that. Uh, but I want to go over this article from the National Post that diplomacy requires a handcrafted copper tub inside the thoughts of Canada's $9 million New York consulate. The, the reason this is brought up is because Justin Trudeau, throughout his 10 years of being Prime Minister of Canada, has behaved similar to his father, Trudeau Sr., in believing that he's somehow Canadian royalty, that he's not just an elected delegate in charge of the country of Canada. He treats himself as though he is owed a luxurious lifestyle. We've all seen how he vacations. We've seen uh, his lavish spending bills whenever he's on a flight with individuals. We've seen his grocery bills. We've seen his renovation projects at uh, Rideau. But now we're seeing a $9 million luxury condo being bought in New York. Now it says here, although I'm technically, I am technically Canadian soil, a great irony is I've never visited the country I represent. However, I've uh, inferred some things. I suspect Canada is a land of plentiful and affordable housing. How else do I describe appropriately tasteful level of opulence? Clearly, the average Canadian is accustomed to such high standards that even a humble consular official has caused to balk at anything less than a suite on Billionaire's Row, which again, referring to the view here outside of Central Park. Um, Billionaire's Row is commonly known. I forget which street it is in New York, but it's it's facing Central Park. Um I believe myself to be the emissary of a nation whose domestic problems are nil. It is only where a nation has mastered its public accounts and whipped its public services into high efficiency that it can celebrate with a nice to have, such as a luxury New York consulate. I see myself as a large banner proclaiming to the world, we have solved all of our problems and we now boldly seek out new challenges. Now, this is a mockery of... Um, <laughs> essentially somebody who's who's stating what it's like to be in this $9 million luxury condominium. When we look at what happened with Garnet Jenis in the house, the liberals are now saying this is a homophobic slur. Now, we put out a video last week showing Justin Trudeau backstage um, with RuPaul, saying that he was sponge-worthy. People are telling me that's an old clip. Uh, it appeared... Again, I could be off. He was wearing the same suit as he was on that show. Now, that could be coincidence as well. Uh, he, he traditionally wears neutral colored gray suits a lot of the time. But what we see here, conservative MP Garner Jenis addressed his homophobic comments in what could only be described as an embarrassing moment for the Conservative Party of Canada, total meltdown. 
Share this video far and wide, everybody. Let's fill that propaganda network. This is what the conservatives are, perpetual high school students who want to lead the country. Now, I've made my statements multiple times of how I felt Garnet Jennis conducted himself when he was on this channel, chewing gum and uh, blatantly acting a little smug. However, any educated individual who watched what went down in the House of Commons could see that it was a smug jab at this $9 million convo asking, why is Trudeau entitled to such luxurious items when he doesn't conduct business in this consulate. He is not royalty. So they're saying, is he allowed to buy such luxurious items like this copper bathtub on the Canadian taxpayer's dime if he's not conducting meetings in them? So they asked, is he conducting meetings in the tub? It was a funny joke, but let's take a look at what happened with Garnet Jennings. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And we've heard a few words said in this House about bullying. I'm trying to provide an explanation with context and to answer false allegations that have been made against me, and I will persist in, in, in doing that. So following questions from the Leader of the Opposition about a $9 million luxury condo purchased by the government, and in particular identifying among the features of that condo a luxury bathtub, the, the Prime Minister ignored reference to those features and instead spoke about the engagement done by the government internationally. Right. And the Hansard shows the exchange. And many of the comments about, uh, uh, made on Twitter about what was allegedly said don't reflect what's in the Hansard. The Hansard notes, does he engage with them in the bathtub? The point of that comment is to illustrate that, of course, meetings don't take place in a bathtub. Luxury, a luxurious bathtub has nothing to do with meetings. The Prime Minister's answer had nothing to do with the questions, but it had nothing to do with sex. I wasn't thinking about or sex Trump. at all. Sure. So right at the end, part of what doesn't help Garner Jennings here is his very quick outburst to try and cover his posterior, so to speak, by saying, it wasn't about this, it wasn't about that, it wasn't about it at all. Um, he's allowing the bait of the Liberals to get to him here instead of the very rational explanation we got seconds before, basically pointing out Justin Trudeau's luxurious behavior and entitlement throughout his tenure as prime minister. Again, we've seen the Aga Khan. We've seen him going to uh, Jamaica for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars on taxpayers' dimes. We've seen over a quarter million dollar build for a single flight in terms of food and alcohol from Justin Trudeau, he sees himself as entitled royalty. By simply stating that, hey, as I said, meetings don't take place in a bathtub, why is this prime minister do those things for the purposes of his business dealings in America when such luxurious items have nothing to do with him conducting business? Now, again, he blew up at the end, and we see here um, far-left wacko Charlie Angus speak up. And this is, again, where I say, give an inch, take a mile. Look at what he has to say. The Honourable Member from uh, James Bay, Tim is James Bay is rising on a point of order. Speaker, I'll keep my remarks to a minute. I hope you'll I'm let me finish. TA, we saw the, the, uh, the tape. I've listened to the tape. What we didn't hear was an apology. So I just want to understand that the Speaker is saying that a Conservative member can make a homosexual slur against the Prime Minister of the country and it's okay and he can defend himself for a good 10 minutes speaking. Is that the standard that we have in the House? We would like to know that yeah. that's the standard that this Speaker is bringing right. because it very much clarifies where we go from here. So I want to interject there because, again, there was no homophobic remark made. There was no sexual remark made by saying, does he conduct his meetings in the bathtub? Nobody said that he did anything with anybody in that bathtub. Nobody said that he was in the bathtub with another man. It was just, does he conduct the meetings in the bathtub? That could mean over Skype. That could mean, uh, well, not Skype, but but you know what I'm what I'm getting at. Uh, there's there's a million different um, online networking apps. But but the point is, is that there was nothing sexual made in that remark by simply asking, does he conduct his meetings there? In in essentially, does he need them again? Now, what's happening here is. 
again, wacko Charlie Angus coming out saying, we didn't hear an apology. This is them pushing for the Conservative Party to admit a mistake they didn't commit and essentially bend the knee. And this is where it comes to the old saying, never apologize to the woke, because the apology, even if Garnet Jenis said, if you interpreted it as interpreted it, sorry, as a homophobic remark, then I apologize. You know, right away, this would blow up into a three ring circus of them saying, oh, oh, they admitted they were wrong. They're full of homophobic representatives. And I'm going to get into a video clip that shows that just after this. Um, but again, the old give an inch, take a mile. I mean, Greg Fergus mutes mics over and over and we get into uh, Robert, uh, Robert Oliphant here uh, talking about his end of things. Again, always playing the victim right? They're milking this for all it's worth because they have nothing else. Raised, uh, and I'm a little confused, so it's a true point of order because the member from Edmonton, Susquehanna, has raised essentially a new point of order, but referred to the yesterday's point of order. However, to be victimized once in this house is sufficient. To be re-victimized again by someone pretending, and we all heard it, and it is in Hansard, what was said, it is a homophobic slur. There were two of them, and they were both absolutely personal. And if the Consul General in New York were a woman, yeah. if she was uh, treated that way in this house, this house would be outraged. Right Every member of this right house on. should be outraged right because on. it was a homophobic slur, and I want you to take it into consideration. I love that you have Mark Gerritsen next to him swinging his head around when he literally just dodged a lawsuit for defamation, um, acting as though, again, they're entitled that, yes, right on, let's, let's get that apology. No words of does he conduct his meetings in the bathtub is a slur. Somebody please, in the comments, point it out to me where that is a slur. You're seeing this behavior go around as you even see Heather McPherson from the NDP, another wacko coming out, saying she'll never support Pierre Polyeva in anything. And that parliament is an unsafe work environment now. And that there are more members of the lunatic fringe than regular members of parliament. So she's made an exact reference towards the conservatives by calling them the lunatic fringe. Do you guys remember the freedom convoy, the infamous days of the small fringe minority with unacceptable views? I mean, you're going to utter that people have made homophobic slurs when no such words were made, but then come out and call them lunatic fringe. I think if anybody owes an apology here, it's them. And we all know that Heather McPherson saying she'll never support or work with Pierre Polyev. Well, they were never going to, to begin with, but let's take a listen to her. Are you going to support the confidence most from Mr. Polyev today? <laughs> no. <laughs> and what do you make of I this? I will support Mr. Polyev never, likely. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Mr. Genesis' uh, statement after question period? Horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. It was horrendous that the Speaker allowed that to happen, and it's disgusting that that member refuses to apologize for a homophobic slur in the House of Commons. It's, it, it makes this a, an unsafe work environment for, for so many of us. It's we disgusting. Watched, we watched Mr. Shearer sort of crook his finger and say, call Garnet, Garnet, and bring him into the behind, into the lobby before he stood up. So do you think uh, Mr. Shearer had some Well, words this is just it, right? The, the Conservatives can't control their lunatic fringe. And, and frankly, there's more and more of the lunatic fringe than, than regular members of parliament at the moment. So again, labeling Garnet Genis as a member of the lunatic fringe, and, and this is where I say an apology, even if it was warranted, wouldn't suffice to them. It's give an inch, take a mile. You even see Mark Holland claim that he faces abuse every day at work and says something about mean girls. I wonder if he forgot how his boss called millions of us racist, sexist, science deniers because we didn't uh, want an experimental uh, procedure. Let's take a listen to what Mark Holland has to say. They're taking the, uh, the strategy from the movie Mean Girls, you know, and this is what we face every day. And so, yeah, it's a very, you know, it's a, I, I really, at the end of the week, and I talk to my partner, and I wonder, well, how do you respond to this? You know, I think we're really having trouble. And sometimes you get frustrated. I don't know. I mean, that's what human beings do. I don't know if somebody's uh, screaming and yelling at you and denigrating you and making personal slurs. And they do that all day long. And that's your workplace. Like what other workplace would this stuff be acceptable? Take a look at their behavior. Now, sometimes I own it. I'm not a perfect person. I make mistakes. Sometimes I overreact. Sometimes I get emotional. But 
sometimes you also blame families for uh, watching the world burn while you take them on torturous road trips for over 10 hours in the car without bathroom breaks. Uh, I'm not going to subject you guys to any further of what uh, Mark Holland has to claim here, uh, because again, the video is getting long, but but it's to draw the conclusion of, of here's, here's what's going to happen with the Liberal Party now. They really have no platform to move forward on right now with everything going on uh, with the Liberal Party when it comes to uh, trying to prop up the block and give the block their demands avoid an early election. Uh, so they're going to try and make the Conservative Party look like a bunch of... Uh, sexist, misogynist, uh, you you know what's as they move forward because they've got nothing else to ride on. And that's essentially what's happening here is they're taking the opportunity of a very obvious comment and shilling it out to project indecency amongst the Conservative Party of Canada. Let me know what you guys think down below. Do you think that this is warranted? Do you think Garnet Jenis meant... Uh, a form of a homophobic slur against Justin Trudeau by questioning the government's radical spending and luxurious spending on New York consulates. Give me your opinion down below. Let me know what you guys think, because I think this whole thing's wacko. I think it's out of left field. I think it's completely unwarranted. Um, do you think an apology would suffice? There's the question to answer down below in the comments. If it's your first time here, I hope this video has earned your subscription. Uh, please make sure, if it has, to click the subscribe bell or the subscribe button and hit your bell for notifications. Join me live here on the channel each and every Friday night again for Friday Night Fringe, our live streaming show, where we go over things like this and everything else that's happened this week in politics, everything coming up in the week ahead, and some back and forth within the community. It's always great to listen to what you guys have to say outside of making these videos, and I always look forward, as well as my wife, Mrs. Fringe, to talking to you guys each and every Friday here on the channel, again, starting at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, each and every Friday evening on the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next one.